Welcome to Rao Online. Today's topic is umbilical cord prolapse. So, uh, what is a prolapsed cord? It occurs when the umbilical cord slips down into the vagina or presence externally and this pressure of the fetal head on the cord can cause fetal asphyxiation. And it occurs in approximately 1 in 6 of every 1000 live births and it should be suspected when the fetal distress is present. It's more common with breech presentations, premature membrane ruptures, large fetuses, long cord, multiple gestations and in the preterm births. Now this incidence of cord prolapse is declining these days because of the increased risk of caesarean for unstable lie, reduction in the number of grand multis, policy of delivering the footling breech by caesarean section instead of allowing the footling breech by normal delivery and now these days there is an increased use of prostaglandins for ripening the cervix. Pathophysiology, loop of umbilical cord is compressed between the maternal pelvis and the presenting part and this results in fetal hypoxia. It can occur in both occult and overt cord prolapse and degree of cord compression after cord prolapse is more in Catholic presentation than in non-Catholic presentation. So here we are seeing that this is a uh, umbilical cord which is containing the artery, two arteries and one vein and when this is a normal cord and what we are seeing here is when the cord is getting compressed there is a, a reduced oxygen blood supply to the baby. So whenever the umbilical cord gets compressed the blood flowing to the baby reduces. So that is why there is fetal hypoxia and fetal distress whenever there is a cord come cord prolapse and cord compression and the cord get compressed between the fetal presenting part and the maternal pelvis. So umbilical cord vessels that are exposed to colder temperature outside vagina undergo vasospasm and this further reduces blood supply to the fetus. So outside body temperature is less than 37 degree. So blood vessels undergo vasospasm and this further causes hypoxia and total cord compression of more than 10 minutes can cause fetal irreversible cerebral damage. Now total cord compression of more than 20 minutes can cause fetal death so it is a dire obstetrical emergency and fetal condition can rapidly deteriorate in cases of compromised fetus of prematurity and intrauterine growth restrictions. Now come you have been in this scenario so you will remember. So we were dispatched to a 28 year old female home alone and first pregnancy, no previous pregnancies with good prenatal care and the due date was more than two weeks and mother was in good medical health. Mother went to the washroom and when she felt the urge to bear down and water broke and she discovered the following. So she, what she discovered that this cord is coming out. Okay, so umbilical cord presents ahead of the fetus. So what should we do? We should uh, make the patient in the lying down position, place two fingers in the vagina to relieve the pressure of the cord and raise the fetus off the cord. Don't make the ba baby's head press on the cord because that will further compress the cord, further causing. So fetal head should be lifted off the cord by putting the fingers in vagina and lifting up the fetal head away from the cord. Check the cord whether it is pulsating or not. Mother can be put in the knee chest or hip elevated position. Give oxygen therapy to the mother, transport the mother to the tertiary care health institute while keeping the pressure off the cord by keeping the mother in knee chest or hip elevated position. Moist dressing, the cord should not be exposed to outside. So the cord should be wrapped up in a moist sterile mopping pad. Do not try to push the cord back into the uterus. Just place the cord inside the vagina and cover the vagina with a moist pack. So this is the knee chest position. So if the cord has come out and if the lady attains this kind of position, the fetal head will be lifted off the maternal bones and the cord will not get compressed. So patient can be transferred to the hospital in this knee chest position. And now coming to the difference between the occult prolapse and the occult prolapse is also called as the hidden prolapse. Uh, now in this, the cord is compressed between the fetal head and the pelvis but it cannot be seen or felt in the vaginal examination. This is called as in vagina it's not seen but then it is getting compressed between the head and the pelvis. And sometimes the cord has come in front of the fetal head. It, the cord cannot be seen but it because it is covered by the fetal membranes amnion and chorion but if you do a PV you can feel the pulsating mass during vaginal examination. 
So, and then there is complete cord prolapse in which the membranes are also absent and the cord is lying inside the vagina and the cord can be seen protruding from the vagina. This is called as complete cord prolapse. Now, the presence of umbilical cord between the cervix and the fetal presenting part with or without intact membranes is called as cord presentation. And cord presentation can be when the cord lies between the presenting part but above the cervix. That is called as hidden cord. Now, in cord presentations, the membranes are usually intact, but occasionally the membranes could be ruptured and yet the cord may not have prolapsed out as the cervix is non dilated. So, if the membranes are ruptured, it is called as cord prolapse. If the membranes are not ruptured, it is called as cord presentation. And the descent of umbilical cord through the cervix and alongside the presenting part is called as occult cord prolapse or past the presenting part when it is called as overt cord prolapse in the presence of ruptured membrane. So, in the cord prolapse, membranes have been ruptured and if you can see the feel the cord, then it is called as overt. If you can't see the cord, it is called as occult cord prolapse. And cord prolapse is a more acute problem than cord presentation. Now, this is same thing. So, this is a hidden, so the cord is getting compressed between fetal head and maternal bones, but then you can't see anything. That's called as hidden prolapse. And this is a cord presentation when membranes are intact and the cord is felt on PV and when the membranes have also ruptured and cord comes out. This is called as complete cord prolapse. Now, there are some practice recommendations given. So, risk of cord presentation or cord prolapse is increased after artificial rupture of membranes or sudden spontaneous rupture of four waters with mal presentations or high presenting part. Now, we should perform a vaginal examination to exclude or confirm the presence of cord presentation or cord prolapse if there is a sudden appearance of persistent deep fetal variable decelerations or there is a prolonged fetal bradycardia. Once cord prolapse is diagnosed, it is treated as obstetrical emergency. And if the woman's cervix is fully dilated, we can expedite the vaginal birth. And if the woman is not fully dilated, then the priority is to relieve the pressure on the cord by elevating the presenting part while preparations are being made for an emergency cesarean section. And if the cord is not pulsating, we, we should do an ultrasound to look for the fetal viability. And then we should plan for vaginal birth if the baby is dead. Mm -hmm.